Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu Wa nasta'inuhu Wa nasta'afiruhu Wa nu'minu bihi Wa natawakalu alayhi Wa na'udhu billahi Min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyati A'malina Man yahdihillahu Fala mu'zillala Wa man yudlilhu Fala hadiyala Wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la Wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma rabbi shrahli sadri Wa yassirli amri Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma rabbana Atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayi' lana min amrina rashada Allahumma rabbi yassir wa la tu'asir wa tammin bil khair Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Sadaqallah Sadaqallahul aliyul azim Wa sadaqa rasuluhun nabiyul kareem Wa nahnu ala thalika min ashahideen Amma ba'd Alhamdulillah All praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For blessing us to be here today To perform the Salatul Jum'ah The Friday Congregational Prayer and to listen to the khutbah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us. To shower his hidayah, his guidance upon us. To shower his forgiveness upon us. And to shower his acceptance upon us. <clears throat> I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah upon me, his mercy. And to shower unto me the opportunity the permission and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge. And once more the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. I remind myself and I remind you, my brothers and sisters, and we always remind ourselves that without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not able to do anything. Two weeks ago, we reminded ourselves in the sermon, in the khutbah, about the importance of seeking refuge in Allah from Satan the accursed. We reminded ourselves of the verses in Surah Al Hijri, chapter 50, verses 40 to 42, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the mukhlisin, the people who are sincere, the people who have ikhlas and sincerity, shaitan or satan will not be able to have authority or power over them. And for about two weeks or so, we have been reminding ourselves on the importance of seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beginning in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the importance 
of us doing that. And we went down to remind ourselves that shaitan is always there, just waiting for us to slip. He's just waiting. But as long as we keep on that straight path, even though shaitan will also sit on the straight path to attack us right, left, back, forth, it is always important to keep on that path Remember our trust, our tawakkal in Allah. Today, in the second khutbah, bi'ithnallah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to remind myself and remind you, my brothers and sisters, as we have been speaking about shaitan in the last couple of weeks, I want to remind myself and remind you that while shaitan does everything in his powers to mislead us from the path of Sirat al-Mustaqim, from the straight path, he will also do everything in his powers for us to follow him. For us to follow him. And one of the easiest things for shaitan, interesting, interesting, very interesting, one of the easiest waswasa, whispering, as we always say, Allah the waswisu fi sudurinas, that shaitan whispers into the hearts of people. And one of the easiest thing that shaitan is always, and most of the times, able to succeed in, is that sin that was the first sin that was ever committed. The sin of takabur. The sin of pride. And I say it's a sin, bi'ithnallah. It's a sin. Because Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 34, Aba was takbar wa kana min al kafiri. What caused Satan? To refuse to obey the commands of Allah when Allah commanded Satan to prostrate to Adam. Allah says it is because of his ignorance. I mean arrogance. Abba was takbar. Because of his arrogance. And if we look back into the history of times, my brothers and sisters, kings and leaders, a lot of times and many a times, most of these people who refuse to listen, obey, and follow the message that the prophets delivered to them was because of their arrogance. Oh yeah, they thought they were too big, they were too great, they were too powerful, they had all the money, they had all the power. So they took a birth. Yeah, shaitan whispers into their hearts. And, you know, especially for people who are now in the path, people who pray salah, people who go to masjid, people who go to hajj, people who fast, people who give zakat, a lot of times, one of that easiest disease, sin that they commit, and it's easy for us to commit, is when shaitan puts that feelings of pride in our hearts. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, if a person has as much as a mustard seed of takabur, as much as a mustard seed of pride, that person will have to go to hell, burn it out before going to Jannah. With all the salah and all the zakat and all the fasting and all the hajj. 
So it is very important, my brothers and sisters, and a lot of times we don't think we are arrogant, you know. Right? And we must not mix up arrogance with beauty. Please. There is a difference with arrogance, and there is a difference with beauty. A lot of people love to be professional, be nice, beautiful. That, that does not mean that that is arrogance. One did address nice. Wallahu jameelun wa yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful and Allah loves beauty. Look at how beautiful Allah has made the mountains. Look how pretty Allah has made fishes, the birds, fruits, vegetables. So Allah does not have a problem with beauty. The ocean, people. So beauty is not arrogance. Wanting to have a nice car and a nice house and nice clothing, that is not arrogance. But arrogance is when we use those things to think that we are better than other people. So there's a fine line. We can use those things to think, and shaitan uses those things to make us think that we are better than other people. And that's where the taqabbur comes in. And it is very sad. You know, astaghfirullah. We see it all around us. It happens among families, husbands and wives, children, parents, brothers, sisters, workers, neighbors, but because we think that we have something, we think we are better than others. And that's the quality that shaitan thought that because he was created min nar and Adam alayhi salatu was salam was created min teen the shaitan said, I was created from fire, and Adam alayhi salatu was salam was created from clay, and fire is superior to clay. So uh, Satan thought that he was better than Adam. So that's the problem. And Satan knows that nowadays he wouldn't really have a problem in trying to get us to do big bad things. No, 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 no. He knows we pray, we do this, we do that. Well, those who don't, he will continue trying to encourage them not to do it. But a lot of times, people who pray and do the 40 Hajj and give a lot of money in zakat and go for the masjid for their fast and tarawih, what does he do with them? makes them think that they are more pious than other people. Yeah, very sad thing. Very sad. It's a disease. And always remember, that was the first sin that was ever committed. Takabur. The pride of shaitan. Abba was takbar wa kana min al kafirin. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 34. So Satan wants us to follow him. And Allah says, do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. But when we look around, that's the problem a lot of people have. Yeah, that's a problem. You know, sometimes, and I repeat this a lot of times, and I will continue to repeat it, Allah, because it is, it is a sunnah to repeat things. Sometimes just the simple greetings to someone. A lot of times we think that we are too great to greet someone first. Do you know, brothers and sisters? The Prophet ﷺ says, and we hear this all the time. The Prophet ﷺ says, if you want to have love amongst yourselves, then give gifts and a lot of salams and greetings to people. Allah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Remember the Sahabas. It is mentioned in hadith. It is mentioned in narrations and uh, uh, commentary of hadith. That if a sahaba goes through this door here, or if he greets someone here, 
and he goes outside, and that person goes through that door, and he meets the person, again he will greet that person. If a rock comes between two Sahabas, they will greet again. Could you imagine that? Because shaitan does not love to see Muslims, people greet. Because that's one of the things he wants people to have arrogance. He doesn't want to see the love and the muhabbat between people. The Prophet says in authentic ahadith, many, many, many ahadith, that to greet someone, and to shake the hands of someone, you know, shaking the hands, wow, it's a very powerful thing. Listen to what the Prophet ﷺ says. He says when two people shake their hands, guna, sins fall off like leaves fall off a tree. Some people don't even like to give salah, fathers to shake hands. Sahaba used to hug and meet each other. Oh, yeah. So what are we saying? Simple things like this, shaitan come. No, you're bigger than him. Let him greet you first. Let him come to you and shake your hands. You see, if we don't shake the brother hand, then shaitan will shake our hand and say, shabash, bacha, shabash, congratulations, you did a fantastic job. And then we go off smiling and we did a big thing. Yeah, we did a big thing by being friends with the big devil. Go check the hadith. Sins fall off and two brothers meet and shake their hands. Very deep. And I'm just saying this because it's just a simple little thing. It's the one of the first things we do when we meet people. But shaitan in, whispers into our hearts, Allah was we Sufi Nas. Shaitan whispers into the hearts of people. And what he can get us to do easily. That takabur, that pride, and that's one of the reasons because we think we are bigger. But you know, if we meet someone that we think is bigger than us, even though you don't like Trump, and he comes here, you might shake his feet. He's the president of America. Even though you don't like Trump, hear what I'm saying? You will shake his feet if he comes to your home. I might kiss it too. Because I see some Muslims do that. They kiss up to politicians, but sometimes I wonder if they're worshipping their God or they're worshipping politicians. Sometimes I wonder if they worship Allah or they worship politicians. Not that I don't hate politicians. I like politicians. They like people as long as they don't do poly tricks and they keep the politics. Because a lot of them are full of tricks. And that's what we've got to be very careful for, my brothers and sisters. Be very careful. And a lot of times we think, we think, we think, yeah, I pray my salah, I do my this, I give my zakat, I fast, I perform my hajj. Listen, that's a serious issue. And when we, we'll continue in the second khutbah. A lot of times people think, I am just on the righteous path. But what does Allah really say about righteousness? Huh? In the second khutbah, we'll continue. Bi'ithnillah, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Shower his mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah without reckoning. Wa akhira da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wala Qibatil Al-Muttaqeen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Rasulihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ajma'een. Once more we thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for blessing us to be here today, to perform the Salat Al-Jum'ah and to listen to the Khutbah. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to shower His peace and blessings 
upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. I again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy upon me by giving me the permission, the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal al Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. So alhamdulillah, as we were saying in the first khutbah, bi'ithnillah, a lot of times, a lot of people, and many a people, really believe that we are all this righteous. Yeah? But, you know, if we were to go and ponder in Surah Baqarah, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 177. Chapter 2, 177. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about righteousness. And I'm sure a lot of us read this. All of our viewers worldwide and Al Hikmah TV and YouTube, Facebook. You know, I'm sure that you all have read this. So I'm only reminding myself and reminding you because as we say and we remind ourselves all the time, Allah says, What that care for in dhikra ten for all mu'mineen. Remind and by reminding the believers benefits. So this is only a reminder. Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Laisal Birra Anta Wallu Wuju Hakum Qibla al Mashraqi wal Maghrib. What is Allah saying here? Straightforward. It is not no tafsir, no explanation, no interpretation. Allah says, righteousness is not about facing the east or the west to pray. Oh, go. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 177. Lais al birra. It is not righteousness, meaning. Righteousness is not just about you facing the east or the west to pray. Referring to prayer. You see, a lot of people just get into the ritualistic things of prayer. And that's why we're saying, be in the line, the first khutbah. You're beating your heads down. You've got the long beds, the long quarters, perform 40 hajj, boast of how much zakat you gave, how much days we fast. And we think we are the most righteous. I remember a couple, maybe a month ago, two months ago, there's a brother sitting right here in the audience. I was right standing right there by the tile area, Brother Azad Sahib. And the brother said, it looks brother just walked in and passed me straight. And the brother has the longest beard inside here. I think he's longer than yours too, Brother Musa. I said, you're kidding. He said, yeah. I said, not only the brother got the longest beard, but he also prays more than five times Salah here. And he does not know to greet a Muslim when he enters the masjid. You see the point I'm getting at? This happened right there. And the brother who told me that is right here. See? Ask him who is the brother. He said the brother with the longest beard. Come on. What is wrong with us? Sometimes you go in a restaurant. You go somewhere. You meet Muslims. Longest beard, longest skurta, biggest a mama, and they don't even know to smile. You know, you probably say, I talk these things all the time. Because I think that sunnah, the sunnah of the Prophet that's what I have read, that's what I have learned. If it's wrong, then Allah forgive me. But I have always remember my sheikhs and teachers telling me to smile was a sunnah of the Prophet huh? We claim to follow the Prophet to greet people, to give salams. And we think we are the most pious and the most righteous. That's why I'm just using the basic, simple thing that the smallest kid learns. The smallest kid learns. Assalamu alaikum. 
And I sometimes don't like to use the word, the biggest donkeys don't know it. But I will qualify that statement, biggest donkeys. You know why? Because the Prophet wasallam says, a person who has knowledge and does not practice it, it's like a gadaha. You know gadaha? And gadaha? What do you say for gadaha in Bengali? Gadaha too? Oh boy, everybody knows gadaha. Donkey. Prophet wasallam says, a person who has knowledge and does not practice it, it's like a donkey with books on its back. So our big, well-educated Muslims who think they know it all, go to study all the tafsir of the Quran. Oh, they study deep things, man. They go to conferences. They go to seminars. Oh, you name it, they're there. But they don't know the basic sunnah. That's like a donkey. Have all the degree and conferences and seminars, title and education, and don't know what is on the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A smile. Huh? Salam. Greetings. But you see the problem, for those of us who came late, it's not that. It's the shaitan whispering into our hearts, Allah di was we sufi nas, whispering into the hearts of the people, you better than that guy. No, it's better than, pass him straight. If he puts his hand out, you put your hand out. Because shaitan, abawa stakbar wa kana min al kafiri. Because of his arrogance, he disobeyed Allah. And he wants us also to do everything that will be a means of disobeying Allah. And he knows that he can win the hearts of people who think they are better, more righteous, more religious, more pious, more zakat, more fasting, more hajj, more salah, that he can put arrogance in their hearts and he will win them and conquer them and take them to hell. Because the Prophet wasallam says, if we have as much as an atom, as much as a mustard seed of arrogance, Allah will put us into Jahannam, get us well barbecued, you know barbecued properly? It's not a whole chicken, it's a little piece of arrogance. Then we go to Jannah. This is serious. And I see this all the time. Allah all the time, astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. So Allah is saying, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تَوَلُّوا وُجُّهَكُمْ Righteousness is not about you just fulfilling the physical rights of prayer or the physical actions of giving money or physical actions of fasting or the physical actions of performing hajj. But righteousness is when we have iman and faith in Allah. That is righteousness. But then he continues to say, But righteousness is so Allah rubs it in. He said, righteousness is when you have iman in Allah. True faith. Know that how much graduation and qualification in Islamic seminars and conferences and classes and how much salah, whatever. No, it's the iman is the righteousness. And that we know that we will face Allah. And we have a hereafter to go to. So our deeds here, our deeds here are very important in our journey to the hereafter. Iman and akhirah. So we will want to do the deeds that will keep us straight to take us to the akhirah. The Jannah. Or not the Jahannam. Yeah. I know sometimes people don't like to hear these things. People love to just hear stories and sophisticated stories. You know, one of the beauty of the Quran is the Quran does not go into unnecessary things. A lot of lessons in the Quran, very basic, but the point. Remember two weeks ago, we reminded ourselves of the seven beauties of the cave? And I reminded myself anew. People argue how many people? Seven, eight, six. The dog was eight, the dog was nine, the dog was six. What happened? How many years they sleep? Allah said, don't worry about how many years they sleep and whether the dog or how many people there were. The point is, they had iman. That was the lesson. They had iman in Allah that Allah, 
Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayi' lana min amrina rashada. Allah, you are Rab, and we are going to leave this evil town, this tyrant ruler. We have Iman in you, and we are going, and you will take care of us, and you will protect us, and you will make this journey of ours successful. And so happened. Allah put them to sleep for 300 plus years. That is Iman. And Allah said, I wanted to show the world that. The world. That's why this is in the Torah, it is in the Bible, this is in the Bible. Everybody here, actually the Bible, with this lesson of the seven youths. Uh, not about how people argue of how much is this and how much is that. No, 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 no. The faith they had in Allah. Allah changed the whole world. I don't want to get back to the lesson. You could go on YouTube or Al Hikmah TV or wherever and you can get it. Allah changed the whole world while they were just asleep. Sometimes you and I think that the change in the world is in our hands. Mm -mm. You know, if we have proper iman and we live our lives like the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to live it, Allah will change the world for us. Yeah. But you see, oh, we pray this Salah, you see. It's all about rituals. And we think we are the best. It's not about the faith in Allah and having true faith and doing what Allah says to do with sincerity, with righteousness. And as we reminded ourselves two weeks ago in the khutbah when Allah says the mukhlisin, shaitan, will not be able to overpower them, the sincere ones. So shaitan will not come in our hearts and say, don't meet that person, don't greet that person, don't show love to that person, don't smile with that person. He will not be able to overpower us with those things. It's a Allah in a shaitan regime, and he will run. Otherwise, as I said before, Baitnullah, he will shake our hands when we follow him. Yeah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. You see, time does not permit, so I'll have to just cut it here. But maybe go home and study this, my brothers and sisters. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 177. A very long verse. One of the very long verses in the Quran. See how interesting? Allah is saying righteousness is not about the physical thing of praying east or west. But it's about the iman and faith in Allah. And then he continues to say, wa malaikati wal kitab wa nabin, and the faith in the angels, the prophets, their message. Yeah. Belief in it. Obeying it. Following it. That's it. And then he went on to talk about wa ata. وَآتَ الْمَالِ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ Oh, subhanAllah, that's a deep thing. And the giving and the kindness of sharing with the حُبِّهِ You know what is حُبِّهِ? What is حُبِّهِ? Yeah. Allah says, when you give charity, you don't give it for people to think, well, yeah, boy, Mr. Muhammad is my name and I give a lot of money. Oh, no, 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 no. Not about name and fame and show off. حُبِّهِ those who give charity for the love of Allah. You see, brothers, that if people who make pledges to Al Hikmat and Darululum do it for the love of Allah, they will give you the pledges. I know you always complain they don't give the pledges because they probably give it for show. What they give? She raised their hands. So everybody see our pledge for a thousand dollars, but that was show. But if you pledge a thousand dollars for the sake of Allah, then you will give it because you're scared you die tonight. Isn't that true, brother? But when everybody raising your hands, 500, 2,000, it's all a show business. Then shaitan said, bye, go to sleep. You got some name and fame. Your name is written. Everybody knows. But the hubbehi and those who give for the love of Allah. That's what Allah is saying. If we give something, give something, for the love of Allah, whether a wife gives something to a husband for the love of Allah, a husband gives something to the wife for the love of Allah, for the love of Allah gives the children, for the love of Allah gives the parents, for the love of Allah gives the brothers and sisters, for the love of Allah gives the community, then it has barakat and blessings. Because it's ikhlas, good intention. And it's for Allah and then we will fulfill the wishes. I always remember one of my very, very, very good friends that studied with me. You know, once we were doing a fundraising, and he said, brother, it's not about people who are wealthy that give. It's people with iman we want to give. 
because it will have more barakat. The man who does not have good intention and he gives you $10,000, mashallah, don't give him back, make use of it, don't be stupid. Make use of it, <laughs> right? But the man who gives you $500 with ikhlas, hubbihi, thought of the love of Allah, that will have a lot of barakat. Iman. Sometimes you see we miss the point, the main lesson that Allah really teaches us in the Quran. Yeah. And then Allah continues about how you give for the will qurba, your near ones, relatives, close near ones, blood ties, friends, everybody, the, the, the orphans, the miskeen, the people who ask, the people in the part of Allah. The whole nine yards, I don't have time to get into it. So, my brothers and sisters, you go home and study this first. Because a lot of us fool ourselves. We come for Jumar, so I don't miss Jumar, you know. So I'm very righteous. Yeah, but then you go back in work and you rob the boss. Last week I was giving a joke to some friends here. Very interesting joke. There was this guy who was working and the boss, his salary is really $3,000 a month. And the boss gave him $4,000 a month. Took it, smile, happy. So the next month the boss gave him $2,000 a month. He got mad. He went to the boss, boss, how could you make a mistake like this? My salary is $3,000. You only gave me $2,000? How did you do that? Boss says, but you didn't complain last month when I gave you $4,000. I made the mistake and I gave you $1,000 extra last month. You didn't complain. Now you're complaining because I made a mistake and give you $2,000? He said, boss, I only tolerate a mistake once. Last week was all right. Not this week. Not this month. See, a lot of us think we're smart, yeah? So I tolerated your mistake last month when you gave me extra, but not this month when you gave me less. A lot of people think we con men. We think we can fool everybody else. But where is the ikhlas? Where is the sincerity? Where is the hubbahi? Doing things out of the love for Allah. Brother and sister, that is deep. That's what Allah is saying here. Laisal birra. The righteousness is not about just the physical prayer and what direction you pray and how much you give and what you do and how much. No, 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 no. It's about the iman, the faith, the sincerity out of the love for Allah. Whatever we do. You give a poor man, walking on the street, begging, family, friend, whoever, whatever. Must be done hubbihi, out of the love for Allah. So it is very, very <coughs> important, my brothers and sisters, as we conclude you know, it's very important that we do things out of, for the love of Allah. Today, you know, last week I was listening to Hafiz Muni Khutbah, and I sit right here and I listen to these students, and I love it, because they remind me, makes life easy for me. See what happens. I listen to their khutbah, and I get a khutbah for the next week. So Hafiz Muni was talking about people expanding and getting bigger and greater and everything else but their Islam. And I'm like, wow, that is so true. But interesting point, Hafiz. And in my mind, I'm like, I see the same thing happening to a lot of parents. They're making wealth, property, everything for their children. That when they die, their children will have everything. That is nice. Nothing is wrong with that. Please don't. I'm not saying that is bad. But I'm just saying be a little smart too. Because unfortunately, you live in a time where you want to work 24-7. You're not expanding your iman. You're not expanding your deen. You're not expanding your Quran. You're not expanding the faith. You're not doing more hajj and more umrah. You're not giving more zakat. You're not doing more nafil fast in the year. Huh? You're not praying more nafil prayer. But you want to make more property and more property for the children and more business for the children. So when you die, they'll be very happy. And you look at the children, you have the hope that when I die, my children will be good and they will do good. Some of these kids, they don't even smile with you, Father. You're so stupid. Your sons and daughters don't even smile with you while you're alive. Why you have this hope that when you die, they're going to pray for you? Does that make sense, brother? Don't you see some people like that? I'm talking about people, they complain. 
Their sons and daughters don't even smile with them. Don't even call them. Don't even greet them. Don't even invite them to their homes. Don't even have time for them. But you, astaghfirullah, what do you call those kind of people? Smart people? But your whole life you're wasting behind someone who does not smile with you, love you, care for you, be kind to you, that Allah has commanded them to do with this foolish hope, building a castle in the air, that they will pray for you when they die, they will make dua for you, they will spend your money in the right path. While you're alive, they're wasting your money. Who tells you when you die, they will spend it in the right path? Huh? Come on. Don't you see that around you? I don't need to give examples. Every second home, that's the problem. But yet we all, what are you making all this for? My children, who does not even pray salah. They may not even be able to pray a janaza. Uh, or read a Quran and make dua for you. And be amongst the righteous children that you would have left behind. That would be a sadqa jariya. Continue bless, continuous blessing for us. So are we thinking? I'm just saying think, you know, I don't have a problem. You could give them all that you want. That's not my business. It's not my money. I'm just here to remind myself and remind you. So we can guess. I just want you to think. Use your discretion. Intelligent people, signs are enough. When you see these kind of signs from your children, you've got to know what you're really doing. You've got to know what you're really doing. If you're wasting money and investment in the wrong path, Maybe you take your money and invest it in something good that will be beneficial to you in the hereafter. And them also. Yeah, yeah, them also will benefit. Just be some thinkers. The Prophet ﷺ says an Akaman person, a smart person, is smart and lives for the hereafter. Not all about here. You're spending everything for here. You are not going there and the children are not even utilizing what you have here properly. No, be careful. Be careful, brothers and sisters. You know, I must say, well, they are good children. So I'm not referring to the children who are good. You have good children, make more good children. And who you have bad, try to make them good. But think a little bit. I know parents, some came here and say, my children don't talk to me, you know. But, you know, all my properties in their name. I say, what an idiot boy, I stuck for a law. But what am I going to tell that parent? What am I going to tell that parent? Yeah. Why don't you put your money in some sadqa jariya, build a mosque, build a school, build something in the name of Allah? That maybe one day the children might get hidayah from that. You know, saying that, I, had, I ended up coming late today because I came back late last night from Jamaica. I had a meeting with the sheriff in the sheriff's office this morning. The sheriff had a meeting with religious leaders about a new security system for masjids and churches and congregations. But we talk about it another day, inshallah. Um, but interesting, you know, two days ago, I ended up flying out to Jamaica, bum, within 24 hours. And this was a family. Very interesting. But sometimes you have this good. Non-Muslims, non-Muslims. But the father was a Muslim. Very prominent man in in Jamaica, prominent. His name was Henry Gulab, and I suppose the family may be listening to this. Uh, well, one, at least the granddaughter actually is the manager of a man called French Montana. Do you guys know who is French Montana? <laughs> yeah, the daughter is the manager of French Montana. She called for him to me to talk to him, but I don't think he didn't pick up the phone at that time. But anyhow, big family, wealthy, top, I mean, millionaires in Jamaica. But the grandfather, hear what I'm saying here, Beth Nalai. That's why I use a little example here. 90, they had about 250 to 300 people. 99% were non Muslims. 95, 99. But the, the grandfather of this man that died, this man used to go to masjid, he was Muslim. But I don't know if all the children are non Muslims, but 99% are non Muslims. And before he died, he told the family, he said, when I die, I want Sheikh Shafai to come and bury me. So I had no choice. I couldn't refuse. I really couldn't refuse. So I had to just pack my bikes and fly out back to Jamaica in less than 24 hours. So alhamdulillah, because it was the man's last wish, and they said, whatever it costs to pay you, Sheikh, you got to come, you got to come. I said, okay, okay, mashallah, mashallah. So I ended up going, mashallah. You know what I realized when I went there? The grandfather of this man 
was amongst the first set of people that came to Jamaica when the British brought them from India 185 to 200 years ago. And one of the things he did there was build one of the first masjid in the island of Jamaica in a place called Westmoreland. We went to a funeral a couple of years ago at that same village. I think this man was there at that funeral, brother. And after that funeral, maybe 10 years ago, he told all his family up to last week before he died, he said, you got to get Sheikh Shafat here. What might cost, cost you all? Um, but all his wealth it takes, pay him and bring him here. But he didn't pay me. I don't take pay to go and do a janazah. So don't worry, if you guys die, you don't have to pay me. Um, when I went there, I realized, even though all the people, 95% were non-Muslims, the mere fact that the grandfather had built a masjid, that little good trickled down into the sun. And the son remembered that. And he was 89 years when he died a few days ago. But he also made this wish that he wanted to be buried behind the masjid. Multi-millionaire. In the audience, there were multi-millionaires. Chinese, Africans, white, black, blue, green, the whole world. He was president of Lions Club for over 27, 30 years. So you know what kind of people came there. But... Although he was from all the highest level in the history in Jamaica of Indians coming to Jamaica brought by the British, he had that Islamic wish. And even without, with his children not being Muslims, they at least wanted to fulfill the father's Islamic wish. You see the point I'm getting at? So what I'm saying here, some of us brothers and sisters, if you spend some of your time and your money in some good investment, down the line, maybe if your children are not Muslims, and Auzubillah, they may still want to continue the good deeds that you have planted. Like, I'm telling you a little example of what happened. And, but if we don't have that kind of legacy, then our children will not want to. And here is non-Muslims people inviting me to come and lecture to non-Muslims. You know? Sometimes Muslims don't invite you to lecture to Muslims. You know, when some of our Muslims have programs, all they want to do is eat and say, no Islamic reminder. We don't have time for that. No bayan, no talk, no Quran, no dadis. Just eat biryani and roti in quantity. See? Don't you hear that all the time? No Quran and remember and Quran and hadith going to happen. Just eat. Here, a bunch of non-Muslims paid whatever it took to carry me there in 24 hours because their father had some Islam. So what are we saying? So if you have children who are Muslims and you set the legacy correct, then Allah will give them the hidayah to be better Muslims, inshallah. Better Muslims. And with your good, they may want to follow your good and get better hidayah. But you are doing it, hubbihi, for the sake of Allah. Don't do it for them, eh? Do it for the sake of Allah. And Allah will guide them. That's the key thing. Allah will guide them. And that's what you want. You want Allah to guide them on the right path. But if you don't do the right thing for the pleasure and the love of Allah, then they may not have that good legacy to follow. So time does not permit, brothers and sisters. We've got to conclude the khutbah, bayt Allah. But I just thought that I would share this reminder to myself and you. Be careful. The, the, the arrogance of shaitan, he will always want to make us have, be a people of arrogance. And we will not want to humble ourselves to live the right life. And it is important. Nothing is wrong. Enjoy life. Live a good life. Enjoy the things that Allah has given to you in life. Nice car, nice house, nice this, nice that. But don't let gurur and takabur come into your hearts because of what you have. And always obey Allah. And do things only for the pleasure of Allah. And Allah will set us on the right path. And shaitan will not be able to overpower us. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Ya Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, ya Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to send your peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een. We ask thee, Allah, to guide us on the right path, protect us, and forgive us, ya Allah. And save us from that disease and sickness and sin of takabur and arrogance, ya Allah. And help us to be pe sincere people. And whatever we do, we do only for you, for your love, for your pleasure, and out of your love. 
and keep us in Allah's Siddhat al Mustaqim. And give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina Allah banar bi rahmatika ya hamra. Inna Allahumma laikatahu yi salluna ala nubi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin bi adini man salla wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin bi adadi man qa'da wa qa'am. Wa salli ala jamil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Wa ala kulli malaikatika al muqarrabeen. Wa ala ibadullahi salihin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Ibadullah, inna allaha ya'amru bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita'i dhal qurba. Wa yanha anal fahsha wal munkari wal bag. Ya'idhukum la'alakum tadhakkaroon. Wa la dhikrullahi ta'ala a'ala wa awla wa azza wa jalla wa hamru. Akbar, Allahu akbar, akimu salam.